Let's check our work. G'day, Port from Small Crown Productions. Welcome to day 35 of the 100 Days of Shakespeare. Uh, tonight, we are reviewing the sonnet that we wrote on Saturday night. So if you missed that, on Saturday night, I wrote a sonnet from scratch on the live stream. And so it's about three and a half hours long uh, because it's actually based on information provided by a customer. So I have a customer that has been following along with the 100 Days of Shakespeare decided that they wanted a sonnet for somebody as a gift and asked if I would use their sonnet as the one that I did the live stream on because I said I was going to live stream a sonnet and they went, make it mine. And I went, all right. So we did. So what normally happens is once I've written the sonnet, I will send it back to them uh, or send the draft through to them for revisions so they can um, have a read of it, see if it really kind of hits the mark for them and um, give me any feedback that they like. And usually it's, um, it's pretty minimal feedback, which is great because the sonnet is being written from information they provide. What I like to do is give them the rough draft, uh, the first draft rather, and just read it without any of my thinking behind it because I want it to at least resonate on a surface level before I start explaining all the connection points that are in there because that can bias somebody's opinion. If they're reading it knowing that, you know, this is connected to this thing that they provided, they might gloss over some of those initial reactions that they have. And I don't want them to. I want them to actually, you know, have that initial reading um connect with them. And so it's the best way to do it. What I will do at the end is provide a run of information and the thought process behind it. So, you know, you provided this information. This is how I took that information and applied it to this end result in the sonnet. So what I want to do is just have a look at the PowerPoint and um, have a look at the sonnet that we wrote. So let's have a look. This is the sonnet we ended up with based on the information provided. So again, if you want to know what the background information is for this sonnet, head over and have a look at the beginning of the live stream. And in the first sort of 15, 20 minutes, we uh, we go through all of the information, maybe the first half an hour, we, we pull out all the information that was provided to me by the customer. So you'll understand what was feeding the end result. So the moment that my king did bid me kneel and fealty's chain was on these shoulders draped, my homage was then steeled upon his steel and ever was my spirit forged and shaped. My mind and soul in one accord did grow. The bloodstone of my heart would hear no word. No thoughts of love, just axemen to my foes to make them fear the timber of my sword. But just like aqua, love will have its way. A trickle that erodes into a stream. Pleasing you is now my only fray in life, in love, in hope, in all your dreams. My homage now doth lie in all your parts. I'll ever be the mistress to your heart. So that's what we ended up with. Not bad. Pretty happy with that. There's a couple of little things that I would tweak in that. And now that I'm actually reading it again, there's one little change I'm going to make that I didn't discuss. It won't change um, the result for the customer, but I know it's going to read a little bit better for me. So um, I'll do that. But let's have a look at the feedback so the feedback that I got was that loved it pretty much the whole way through, just wasn't happy with the word and sword rhyming point. Now, that is not uncommon. So word and sword are words that were often rhymed by Shakespeare and other writers of that time because in the original pronunciation, those words actually rhymed. So whether it was word and sword or sword or ward, or I don't know the actual pronunciation, but those two words in period did actually rhyme. And so, you know, now and then I'll use that as a rhyming structure. Um, but knowing that it's likely that uh, modern eye, modern ear might not take to it because of how we pronounce those words in the modern world. And I've always got that in the back of my mind when I use that. So I kind of often expected if I do do that, someone might not be overly happy with it because you get into a flow of writing, uh, reading um, and you want it to kind of just have that flow uh, with the rhyme. So this person uh, that purchased this didn't 
really want that as the rhyming pattern. So that's totally fine. But what they also did was they suggested a line to replace the word word. And so this is the line that they suggested. So my line was the bloodstone of my heart would hear no word. And his line was the river of my heart would bear no ford. So it gave it a rhyme distinct like connection to sword. Now I like that. It's actually not bad. It's a niambic line. It's 10 syllables. It ends on a word that rhymes very cleanly with the word sword so that it works perfect. Let's have a look at it in there. So my mind and soul in one accord did grow. The river of my heart would bear no ford. No thought of love, just axemen to my foes to make them fear the timber of my sword. Definitely works. But what I'm missing in that line now is the bloodstone. And the concept behind this whole stanza was to set the phrasing up that... Um, my heart had turned to stone and I had pushed all emotion aside because I had to just focus on killing our foes. Like I was just so entrenched and so focused on war and battle. There was no room for emotion. I couldn't let myself have an inch um, of emotion because, because I had to kill people. That was, that, was, that was the job I had. And so my heart turned to stone. And that's kind of what we miss now. If we were to use this line, we lose that bloodstone, which not only gives us that sense of a heart being hardened, the bloodstone heart, um, you know, river is soft. We reference river later in the sonnet. So down here, um, we've got, but just like aqua love will have its way, a trickle that erodes into a stream. Now we have river and stream, that could be a connection point, but the impact of that line is to say that the water has eroded away the rock over so much time with so little effort that a stream can now pass through. So there's these kind of plays on these imageries that I wanted to work out. So for me, I really wanted to keep bloodstone in there. I really wanted to keep that concept of rather than a river, which is soft, you, you can get different imagery because you could talk about the, the rush of a river, but that's not really the imagery we're talking about. We're in the middle of a, a couple of lines that talk about being hardened, like my mind and soul in one accord did grow. That whole idea that I, I was focused solely on battle. And this, this line, the river of my heart would bear no ford. It still keeps us in line with that. It definitely works, but I lose that extra punch of the bloodstone hardening the heart, that kind of thing. And so I really wanted to make sure we kept that in, but still met the needs of the customer. So this is what we're looking at. The bloodstone of my heart would bear no word no thoughts of love, but axemen to my foes. Now, the wonderful thing is, when I was looking back over these lines, something popped out. We're looking for a word that rhymes with sword. And it just so happens that in the line above, I used the word accord. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to just see if I can highlight that for you. So accord and sword, that works. So I thought, well, how can I maybe use a chord in the second line as the rhyming word and then maybe flip that first line as well? So what it means is that instead of just changing the one line, I'm going to actually change probably one and a half lines because then I get to keep bloodstone of my heart. For me, that was important, partly because of the birthstone, partly because of the, the imagery that it created. So... This is what I came up with. I dug back into the information that we were given. Gems, gemology, we're, we're using this stuff. Is there anything else in there that I can play with? And one of the words that I'd found was facet, which is an angle. It's, uh, you know, uh, sort of the, you look at the different facets of something. It's also what they call a cut in gemology, in, in diamond cutting, in gem cutting. So I thought, well, that could be a really interesting way to tie that in. So I actually didn't have to change too much. I, I just went, went back and went, well, my mind and soul in like facet did grow. So still iambic, changes the flow a little bit, which is actually not too bad. Um, and then the bloodstone of my heart bore no accord. So 
basically getting a, a cord to um, kind of be the rhyming word and just changing that word out in the line above. So basically now we still get that sense of the bloodstone of my heart keeping that hard heart that it would bear no accord with anything else. No thoughts of love. And by itself, that line kind of doesn't make a little sense. But when you continue through, you understand that what we're saying is that my heart would bear no accord with thoughts of love. So when we read it in full, it still really works and has that strong impact. So my mind and soul in like my mind and soul in like facet did grow. The bloodstone of my heart bore no accord. No thoughts of love, just axemen to my foes to make them fear the timber of my sword. So we understand that he had a singular vision. His heart was, his heart was hardened to thoughts of love and emotion and he was solely focused on his goal. It keeps us with that connection point through to the erosion of stone being eroded by water in our um, turn and allows us to keep that bloodstone uh, the bloodstone in as the march the early period march stone so sent that back to him as an option and nailed it yeah very happy with that so which is great so there you go so that is something to play with yourself if you're writing sonnets but it's also something to think about. Shakespeare in his day was essentially controlled by the Master of Rebels. So the Master of Rebels could control what plays were written, well, actually what plays were performed, and he could actually veto parts of plays. So if there was a particular phrase that Shakespeare really wanted to use or a concept that Shakespeare really wanted to get across, he might have to play with his text like that in order to skirt a certain phraseology that might create an impression in the Master of Revels mind and then still be able to get his point across. So, you know, when you start writing and you're looking at writing for a specific outcome, uh, having the ability to find different ways to say something is super important. And you'll note when we go through that live stream, um, one of the first things I do is just start writing lines and finding different ways to say the same thing so that I can get different rhyming words and that kind of stuff. So anyway, there you go. That's the revision for the sonnet. Sonnet's now done. Um, that person is happy with that as an outcome. And uh, that's the sonnet that's being delivered. So um, thanks very much for watching. Hope hope you got a little bit of extra value out of that. So it's great to pair that up with the live stream and, and see the process that we went through if you want to write your own sonnets. Uh, in the Shakespearean style. Uh, it would be great if you got something out of this, enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, check out some of these other videos about the channel, and I'll see you there. Thanks.